Hello, uh, good afternoon. My name's David Edmonds and I'm the festival's director at Seven Arts and Seven Arts are the producers for the Artist Festivals. Um, and I'm pleased this afternoon to welcome uh, Emily Hett um, to join us. Hi, Emily. Hello, hi. <laughs> and uh, Emily is the recipient of our graduate commission, which was for our Atmosphere Festival, which was due to play, take place uh, this coming weekend. And obviously due to the, the current situation we're all in is now not happening. Um, but we are um, still developing Emily's work and we've been really pleased to be able to continue with the Graduate Commission and we will, once we are in a position where we can, we will be presenting Emily's work with the rest of our work that we're presenting as, as the festivals as we go forward. So um, we wanted to use this as our, our first Facebook Live um, experience to uh, catch up with Emily and find out a little bit more about her process and her practice and, and where she's got to uh, with the commission. So um, thank you for giving some of your time up today, Emily, to come and have a chat with us. Not a problem. It's nice to be here. See other people. <laughs> and, uh, straight, yeah, strange way of kind of doing things. But um, uh, yeah, so um, I guess I want to start really. Can you tell us, Emily, a little bit more about um, about your background as an artist, really? Yeah, of course. Um, so basically, I did my foundation up in Manchester, where I'm originally from. And then I um, went to study fine art at Loughborough University. Um, whilst I was there, I did a, a placement as well in uh, Coventry, actually. Um, at the Manufacturing Technology Centre, so it was like an engineering company. Um, and there I was making work to kind of like reflect the company's ethos and their technologies. Um, and then I graduated last summer. Um, and from then I um, was awarded the Artist Benevolent Fund um, Steps Change Programme, which is uh, basically, it's in partnership with Loughborough University and it's meant that I can return back to um, Loughborough for the full year and I've got access to all the like the technician support and the facilities um, there's some financial support as well from the ABF um, and there I'm kind of working on becoming a I suppose professional artist as a as a freshly graduated fine artist. Amazing. And uh, one of the things that, that kind of struck us, Emily, with your sort of once you pitched for, for the Graduate Commission this time around, was that you've got a really distinctive style to your work and, and, and aesthetic. Um, how did that develop and, and sort of what, where does that inspiration come from for you as an artist? Um, so I have quite like a, it's not a rigid process, but I go through stages of developing my work. So I'll start off with, say, um, looking at lots of different um, shapes and forms from kind of plants to fauna and seeds and cacti and um, microscopic imagery and I'll collect all those kind of forms and shapes together um, and I kind of then start merging them and creating these almost hybrids of patterns so they're not direct um, drawings from an original source but kind of these merging of shapes and forms um, and from that once I've got my pattern I'll kind of start bringing it to life with colour. So I'll do a lot of kind of colour tests and um, looking at ways that they kind of complement each other, ways that they'll work, sit well together from working on a collection, especially. I'll have kind of lots of different palettes and make sure as a range they'll look, they'll, they won't clash as a, as a, as a, a whole. Um, in terms of the forms, I start off by kind of having a rough idea of the form that I want, but then I very much kind of respond to the material in front of me so I'll if I'm making and it, it it doesn't feel that it quite sits right in the space how I originally planned it I'll kind of adapt it and change it to how it will kind of have a I suppose a balanced aesthetic so it's quite free and playful in that sense and 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 just while while we're on that so behind you that's some of your work do you just want to kind of talk through again I have just talked about your your style and aesthetic kind of that where that features yeah so this one yep yeah um, cause so this one, so this one's from my, um, the inspired from my placements. This was all made from microscopic imagery. So that's all like my different color palettes, I suppose. And this one, um, this is going to be the, one of the three sculptures for the festival. Um, and this was based on, I think it was a cell that I'd looked at, but I had uh, imagined it actually, um, a little bit longer, but when I started making it, I felt that it got to a point where I like I like the sculptures when they almost feel like they could come to life. Um, so I, I like having these almost growth parts and this once the pattern's on as well, it kind of transforms it in term, terms of um, relating to kind of metamorphosis and, and growth and, and suggesting something new and, and changing. Um, 
so that's kind of where the um form came from it's quite organic um and biomorphic i always choose shapes that are kind of free flowing and and almost gentle in the form because um i want to kind of create positive emotion in the viewer and i, I find a lot of spiky forms they kind of suggest danger and that kind of thing so all my forms are kind of very fluid and fluid like flowing and then your finish work obviously is the the sculptures things are there but also with then that sort of color palette and that text is from behind you on on your your other work kind of yeah. come together to give it a real vibrancy and yeah yeah i thought it was really interesting what you're saying about them kind of coming to life and, and we'll for those of that are watching we'll, we'll share via our, our social media um a bit later um but um uh, emily did a little kind of motion stop motion of, of some of the sculptures in her garden last week moving around and they do come to life there's kind of like this <laughs> animal context to it where they feel strangely alien but you, you really warm to them and there's obviously something around their shape and certain shapes and certain patterns that just make you feel connected to a piece of art but they they feel very friendly and they feel very i know we're going to talk a bit later on about joy and the joy in your work but they it has that sense it's really interesting that sort of how you've curated that around that say kind of not doing sharp angles because that feels maybe more aggressive but that that they've got a lovely sort of puppy playful feel to them which i really love Oh, thank you. Yeah, I um, I exhibited one of um, um, a degree show last year, and there was a little boy that came up and kind of patted one on the head, and I just kind <laughs> of thought that, that like summed it up because it was almost like he just was his friend, and yeah. um, I wanted that kind of familiarity, people to kind of feel familiar with them, but not a direct thing, a, like a, um, a direct reference to something, but you kind of do feel subconsciously familiar with the form, so it's working then hopefully. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, so um, I guess I'm interested, what um, what attracted you to our commission? Obviously, it's our second graduate commission and, uh, that we're offering as part of the festival's program through through Seven Arts and the Artists Festivals. Um, what attracted you to, to apply for the commission and, and the work in Worcester? So, um, like I said before, I've recently kind of moved to the area and having recently graduated, a lot of the artists that I know are either my age have moved back home or they're kind of maybe not pursuing fine art as a career. So I've been wanting to try and kind of be involved in projects that in the Midlands and kind of broaden my art connections within within the region that I'm living in at the moment. So I'd come across the Worcester Festival um, Commission just by chance, really. Um, and when I'd seen it, I thought it was really forward thinking in terms of kind of the, how it had sustainability at the, the heart of the commission, but also the theme of the festival being kind of love, love our world and how we can use an artwork um, to kind of inspire change and inspire new ways of thinking. And I thought that that was important that the, the artwork had a purpose, but also really resonated with ideas that I was trying to do within my own practice. Um, and when I'd seen, when I'd seen the, um, the fact that that it, it is being used to promote positive change. I just thought that it'd be really good to be part of a commission and, and a culture and, and a society that is aiming to use artwork in that sense. Um, so yeah, I was excited as well by the prospect of doing um, some public art and for something that, that was so kind of close to my own subject of work. It's, um, it's interesting you touch on sustainability um, as, a, as a festivals organization, through Seven Arts and through Worcester as a city, we're, we're really engaged in, in that kind of sustainability conversation. And, and we're certainly striving to make our, our practice and everything we do as, as sustainable as possible. Um, we know we're not perfect at that yet. And it's very much for us a sort of work in progress and trying to get to a place where it's, it's very much in our mind in terms of when we're curating our festivals, programming work, and um, how we present that work. So um, can you talk a little bit more around where sort of sustainable practice features in your work and particularly how you featured it in, in these commissions for us? Yeah, of course. Um, so I suppose um, I'm always trying to be as resourceful with my materials as possible. Um, a lot of my practices uh, outside of, of uh, these commissions as well is um, in ceramics and as part of that any um, of the clay and that kind of thing that doesn't get used within the process is all reclaimed so I think as well just as an artist is not you've not got much money so if you can be most resourceful and most sustainable with the materials you can use then actually it's much better in the long run both for the environment and financially and um, this in particular this um, this sculpture these have been made so I've done a project last year that involved some wooden pieces and I, I wasn't using them anymore 
Um, so I just cut those down to the, the shapes that I wanted for the bases and they, they made the base of the, um, the sculpture. Um, my intention was to use uh, polystyrene because obviously that's not a recyclable material um, for the car. But I found, I was trying, I did a little miniature tester and I was, I was sticking them together and as I was standing back, they were just kind of crumbling apart. Um, so I started to look into new materials um, and I came across um, chicken wire, which um, although it can't be recycled, it only took one roll to make all three of them. It has zero, zero waste um, and it's actually really solid and it means that I can just have a shell without having to fill the inside with any other kind of material or resource. Um, and the outside um, is then just layers of um, paper, paper mache, so just recycled uh, newspapers, magazines, um, cut up into little, uh, well not cut up, ripped up, because if you cut them you can see the lines on the outside, uh, rip them and just layer, so each one has five layers of paper mache to make it smooth. Um, I've used all my, um, binders that are kind of uh, wallpaper paste and PVA glue, which are all non-toxic um, and have, they've been sealed as well so that nothing will leak out of the sculpture if it's if it gets a bit of um, water on. Um, and the paint is all non-toxic and the, this white paint is actually the remnants of what we used to paint the kitchen with. So <laughs> I've tried to be sustainable as possible. Um, and is that something that features a lot in your practice, Emily? Is that something you're very aware of as an artist in trying to sort of, I know it was specific in our commission, we wanted artists to really think about how the work was being made as well as what the work was. But are you finding more and more that that's something that, you know, you're finding is becoming easier to get those materials, that people are more aware of, of kind of wanting to sort of make artwork that is sustainable? Yeah, 100%. I think that... Um... As especially kind of my generation as well within university a lot of, of work is, is um, focused on kind of recycling materials and how we can use just everyday waste material to convert into something that's actually has an importance I think companies are coming a lot more aware of it I mean we see recycling in these studios all the time now and and even in my day day-to-day -day life I try and recycle so I think subconsciously um I personally, I'm always trying to recycle, reuse, um, repurpose as well, repurpose old, old things that maybe you think are discarded um, or old bits of paper or that kind of thing, all to recycle into making something that's, that's usable and tangible, I suppose. And I suppose if everybody did that, then we could really change um, around society, really. <laughs> um uh, and um, what's the what's the process now for you in terms of sort of finishing? So we're at this sort of stage with the yeah. commission and, and I'm talking a little bit more about how we're going to house it and what will happen sort of in terms of how we present the work. But for you now in terms of finishing the work, what's the, the next stages of, of your process? Um, so they need to be fireproofed. Um, and I've been looking into that and the most sustainable way of doing that with the least impact to the environment and that's actually through a spray and not an aerosol um but they need to be uh fireproof for the and for the uh health and safety reasons of course um and at the moment i'm waiting on a delivery of that because obviously <laughs> the uh, deliveries are a bit backdated at the moment i've um got my color palettes all kind of developed and ready i know um i actually been trying to work in a different way instead of getting all my colors out of paint pots here and messing up the uh, spare bedroom i've um, been working on the ipad just kind of coming up with different color schemes and that kind of thing and i've done all my testers i've got all my paints ordered and then it will be a matter of painting all the sculptures because they've all been primed and they're all ready to have the full application of color um and then they need to be uh they're all dismantled so I can fit them all into my car and when they're delivered to the festival whenever it's um, rearranged to and um, they will all kind of um, be uh, fixed together I've made them all so they kind of all drill together and then it's one complete unit that's weighted down and and our, our intention say it was it was going to be part of atmosphere festival this coming Saturday but our intention is that we will present it uh, somewhere within the city once things are back together and then we're looking at where it will have a permanent home uh, afterwards so that we're not just sort of showing it for a few days or a day and then the, the work disappears we're wanting to find a, a suitable home for for the work to sort of stay in Worcester and people be able to continue to sort of engage with it so it's, it sustains the life I think that's an also interesting debate around sustainability is how we make things last longer 
um, in terms of kind of artwork or engaging with it. So um, that, that will be our intentions and we will be sharing that with everybody via our social media and our websites um, once we, we're a bit further sort of into this year. Um, one of the things that, that we've touched on a little bit, Emily, is, um, and it struck, you know, all of us at, at the festival team, um, was around the, the, there's a real sense of joy in your work. Um, how, where does that come from? And, and you know, where, because obviously that you've touched on it a little bit, but actually it, 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 it can be hard sometimes, can't it, for visual arts work and particularly sculpture to kind of really resonate emotion with people. And some people will find it, it's difficult to engage with um, and, and there's barriers, but I think your work is very open and inclusive and real has this sort of sense of joy about it. Um, where, where does that come from? Um, so, I suppose originally um, I was kind of really playful in the, in what I was exploring and what I was kind of um, kind of exploring within my practice and in my drawings and my paintings um, and I was getting a lot of feedback. Um, I think based on the vibrancy of the work, saying this makes me feel happy and, and also a, a, as part of it doesn't really have a direct subject matter so it's not got a strong cultural reference or it's not got a really strong visual as in in terms of it's not a rainbow or it's not a, a plant or it's not something that's actually tangible it's it's a loose so it's almost this relationship between the viewer and the objects which i'm really interested in how that can kind of give a um subconscious feeling feelings that that the viewer doesn't really know that's uh, that's working it's, it's really um playful in the sense of that and I suppose it was this kind of response that I was getting to people saying, oh, it makes me feel happy and joyful, that made me think, like, what, what does that even mean, really? You know, how do you make an artwork? Because I wasn't, at first, specifically doing it to create joy. I mean, I enjoyed that people had that emotion, but I wasn't really sure why it was doing that. And I think further trying to understand and a lot of research around the emotion of joy has made me kind of realise how you can have objects with certain... Um, kind of aesthetics to create a certain effect and a certain emotion um, and that's become really kind of important in my work and also at the at very multi levels so if I want the viewer to kind of feel that positive um, response but then also the process for me also needs to be kind of a joyous one if it's a really labor intensive I don't mind labor intensive but if it's something that's really horribly like messy and just not my kind of make it if it's it just doesn't it just doesn't work the outcome is just not it's like not a joyful thing at the end of it so I think the process is really in, important um and I've been doing a lot of kind of at the moment um arts in health as well looking at how artwork can be put into spaces to change atmospheres and also um kind of provide a moment especially in hospitals um of distraction for kind of um staff and um patients um so yeah Brilliant. And, and just a little bit of sort of behind the scenes, we, we were talking earlier, but do you want to kind of talk a little bit about how, how your practice has changed from where you were with these sculptures in a studio uh, built for making work a month ago and to where you are currently working? Do you want to just give us an insight on that? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so obviously being at Loughborough, I mean, we do take it for granted. You have the whole studio space. I had technician support and I had all the facilities, the kilns and everything like that. Um, so. I suppose pre um, pre COVID nineteen, um, the original sculpture that I had proposed uh, for the festival had been one big sculpture hanging it. So I since then have needed to work from home. So I reduced the scale to three small sculptures so they fit through my doors. And we've I've converted half converted the spare bedroom. So um, it's a, it's all the clutter on one side and all my art on the other side. <laughs> we kind of a very fine line between both of them, but. <laughs> And then I'm just kind of working at home and now a bit in the garden because it's been nice weather. Um, just, and I've been, to be honest, quite lucky to have this commission because it's just been able to, I've not needed any other um, equipment, just the um, materials around me, which is, is good for as well people that want to be creative at home in this period of time. You know, if you can look around and find things to be, to recycle and to make artwork out of. And, and it was really important for us to say that we could continue with the commission and those conversations. I guess it's another insight in terms of how, how commissions change and get shaped. So you was asked, we, there was a bigger sculpture in mind initially, but then once we knew we needed to change the process, we're like, okay, how do we maintain that and we make it smaller? And, and that dialogue, I think, is quite interesting between sort of 
commissioner and festival organizers and the artists and that sense of sort of working together to find a way through so I think that's that's quite interesting for people to sort of it, it's not always a case that a festival will want x and the artists will want x and and there's a there's a dialogue that goes with that and it's it's about understanding the artist's intention and the artist understanding the the festival's intention as well so that's a really important sort of relationship and, and dialogue we, we have in, in this sort of process. Um, brilliant. Um, uh, Emily, I guess before we kind of let you go and, and enjoy um, some afternoon sunshine and, and a bit more painting, um, what, uh, what would you say to any recent graduates who might be interested in applying for one of our graduate commissions going forward? We, we will be having more graduate commissions. Um, this project is, is a multi-year project and will continue on and we will have graduate commissions throughout all of our festivals. But do you want to say what you would say to those graduates and how you found it? And, and you know, just a little bit about that would be great. Yeah, um, so I suppose for me, this has just been a huge learning curve. I mean, just like you've just said then, there's been a dialogue between us and, and everybody at, at, at the festival. Um, and I suppose pressing times like this show how, how commissions actually work, because I think fresh out of kind of university, you've not really had many of these experiences it, this is the probably the largest well it is the largest commission that I've done and I think I've learned so much just even from going from like the risk assessments and the health and safety side of things to then work into um design something for a commission um, and then also having like you said that dialogue of changing and adapting ideas and thinking outside the box and I think there's just so many skills that I've learned from this opportunity and hopefully it will open so many more doors as well and I can become more involved in uh, Worcester. Brilliant and um, we've had uh, we've had a couple of questions in um, from people watching the, the Facebook stream which is great so uh, the first question is um, how is the current situation we find ourselves in has that influenced your ideas around future work um, and, a, and a note that sort of fascinated how arts and culture seem to be particularly helping some people deal with kind of being in the situation we're in. And so as, how has that sort of the, the wider world influenced your thinking about what you're going to do next or, or those ideas? Where does that sort of fit with you currently? Um, yeah, so it's made me really kind of think about in terms of how I can adapt my practice. I think in this time, I, I mean, I, I've predominantly been working in ceramics. So obviously I have none of the facilities. So I'm thinking about kind of maybe going forward, possibly purchasing a kiln, maybe starting um, my own small little workshop at home, which eventually I would have done anyway, but um, also looking to develop my other, I mean, I, I love painting, so possibly do turn into a different medium. I think sometimes maybe not being in your comfort zone and being made to do something different can actually be quite refreshing and, and open up your eyes to things. I mean, I've been quite lucky, as like I said, to have, the commission that I can work on at home um, and that's tied me over for at least the last four weeks and probably the next couple of weeks two or three weeks really um, so I suppose I've just been kind of adapting my work really um, I've started up a project called Hetty's Home Art um, and that's just I've been trying to do um, drawings as often as possible which I've been uploading to my uh, a project page where people can freely download them at home onto their iPads or print them out and colour them in. Um, and there's a lot of kind of, um, I think people turning, uh, turning to be creative at home and it's because of people obviously have so much time. Um, and I think creativity, creativity can be a real tool to kind of help you deal with everything at the moment. Um, and get lost in really. I, I always get, I'm just in my own little world sometimes when I'm painting, so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's bizarre. I've got really into colouring. It's like I've not coloured since I was like five, but actually suddenly you're like, oh, I just get lost for hours doing this. And it, it's those interesting things that you give yourself permission to do or forces. It's just kind of really interesting. Um, yeah. Not, not questions, but we've had a couple of comments tonight from people saying um, it's really nice to hear about your process and, and we don't get enough of what an artist process is. And particularly people enjoying the environmental theme and the sustainability themes. Um, and a number of people saying they're looking forward to seeing the final work. So um, that's, oh, that's great. We've sort of been able to share that today. Um, so um, we're going to wrap up shortly. Um, Emily, thank you so much for your time for, for sharing it. Um, this has been our first Facebook Live session. We're, we're planning to do more um, through Seven Arts and um, through the festivals team um, and sharing uh, kind of conversations and ideas and thoughts with the artists that, that we're working with uh, going forward. Um, we will share lots of stuff around Emily's work and there's some pictures and the little video I talked about via um, our social media. So you can find that on our Facebook page and also on our Twitter. 
Also check out Seven Arts' his Facebook page and Twitter. There's loads of stuff kind of happening and stuff for sort of people to engage in. So um, uh, thank you, Emily. And thank you for everyone that's kind of watched this afternoon and kind of posted comments in. And um, we'll see you all again soon. Take care. Thanks, Emily. Thank you. Thanks very much for having me. Thank you. Bye. Bye.